The Palestra has been a one-of-a-kind basketball place for almost nine decades. It's the home of the Big Five of Philadelphia College Hoops. Penn, Villanova, St. Joe's, LaSalle, and Temple have made basketball history here. Today, the explorers of LaSalle and the Owls of Temple renew their city of brotherly love rivalry. Since 1927, the Palestra has been the place for college basketball here in Philadelphia. The LaSalle Explorers and the Temple Owls meet today. Part of Jimmy B. Week for Cancer Research on ESPN. We continue our commitment to the V Foundation and Jim Valvano's dream to defeat cancer. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Philadelphia. Mike Crispino, Bob Knight. And a great rivalry game for you here today. It's two teams with identical records, folks, but there's a little bit extra when they meet in this building. Well, there's no question about that, and we've talked a little bit earlier about the fact that there isn't anything more enjoyable than a rival game where kids have been probably playing against each other since they were in junior high school, and we'll certainly see both of them play as with all they've got here this afternoon. Uh, a couple of featured players, Darrell Wright is a big man for LaSalle. He's a senior and a lot expected of him. He's a heavy lifter, and he's hoping to anchor and carry the offense and defense for LaSalle. And for Temple, Will Cummings, a, a senior guard, plays big minutes and carries a big load for Fran Dunphy, averaging 15 points a game, leading his team in all those categories. Starting lineups here today, both teams four and three. LaSalle, keep an eye on Steve Zach, big 6'11 senior, averages eight and a half points, seven and a half boards. He mixes it up in the paint. And for Temple, Quinton DeCruz, he's a junior from Union, New Jersey, averaging 13 points a ball game. Now, LaSalle, coached by John Giannini, 158 wins in his 10 years. A noted author wrote a pretty good book on college basketball trying to bounce back from a 15 and 16 season there he is and uh, now 162 career wins at LaSalle second in school history and his opponent Fran Dumphrey Bob he has a lot of ties to Philadelphia he played at LaSalle now he coaches at Temple and he's done a pretty good job at Temple against his old school well he's done a great job and and you're so right about the kids and playing against each other. There are a lot of kids out here uh, on this court right now that have probably spent six, seven, eight years playing against each other because the Big Five uh, here in Philadelphia has had great recruiting in this territory and there have been a lot of home kids that have played for one of the five schools here. The uh, Big Five has made its home here at the Palestra since 1955. Well, the officials Rick Crawford, Jose Carrion, Alfred Smith. Alfred Smith will toss it up to start the ball game. Temple in the home white, LaSalle in the road blue. And the tip is won by the Owls. And we're underway. You can just sense the intensity in the building as these two schools well represented. 8,700 plus on hand here this afternoon. Three-point field goal attempt rattles in and out, and it's rebounded by Steve Zach. Really good patience that they had that time for that first possession. Good patience that Temple had, but even with that, they didn't wind up getting a very good shot. Now LaSalle dumps it down low for a little jump hook and a nice move that time by Jarrell Wright. I think that Wright's move was really good down there and strong. He came with that left hand and his right shoulder was into the offensive or defensive man when he went up over him. So you've got to say to start with that uh, there, the LaSalle is way, way ahead in this game. Just one possession, though. Well, there is the tradition of the streamers coming down after the first basket by each team. will return with more from the Palestra. LaSalle has the first bucket.
Lifeproof cases for iPhone and Galaxy. Get 25% off select cases at lifeproof.com. Think, I think we're going to have a technical foul here. Well, welcome back to the American Athletic Conference here at the Palestra. Now, the streamers just came down, Coach, and what happens is they do call a technical foul, as you say, but what happens is the player will just step across the line, and it won't be a good free throw. They'll have to call it off. Meanwhile, Temple University course in Philadelphia. And LaSalle, there's, <laughs> there's Pennsylvania, there's Villanova. And so they, what they do is they wipe away the technical foul on purpose so neither team gets an advantage, I don't think. Let's see, they're going to try it again. He's, he's got his foot on the foul, line, as you can see. And so the official has to wave it off for television purposes. <laughs> now that's good sportsmanship. Well, that's been going on forever, <laughs> as I understood it. And I can, we played in here a couple of times when I was uh, fortunate enough to be coaching at West Point. And I don't remember that one back then. And no streamers for the Bob Knight Army Club? I don't understand. <laughs> it's a Philadelphia tradition. That's what it well, is. It was so long. Harry Litwack was a Temple coach at that time. He's a great guy and an outstanding coach. And here's Cummings. Pull up jumper. Nope. In and out. And Zach already with two rebounds early. Zach made a great move going to the defensive board there. That's as quick a move as you're going to see a kid make on defense. Playing against a little bit of zone here. Ball deflected away. They keep it. Still 15 to shoot. And a turnover. Baseline 15 footer is good. Will Cummings and here come the streamers this time from the Temple side as they get their first bucket we we always think about the shooter uh, when he hits a bucket we never give the passer enough credit and boy that was an awfully good pass that was made to an open guy in the corner uh, you can see the Temple fans jacked up at the Palestra, there's been so many great players over the years. I mean, I think going back to the 50s, Guy Rogers, multiple MVP types who have played here. He from Temple, uh, the Salt Explorers, people like Lionel Simmons. And Temple, of course, has Aaron McKee, who's now coaching on the, uh, the college bench as they came here in January of 1927 for the very first time. And uh, the home of the Big Five since 1955. Host to the most games in NCAA tournaments around the country. Now this place brings out that old school flavor that sometimes you miss with today's arenas. <laughs> when I was when I was just a kid in junior high school and on through high school, my favorite player was Tom Gola. And and uh, there wasn't as much television then, obviously, as there is now, but. I, I really uh, looked at him as a tremendous example for kids. He was a great defender. He was a, uh, passed the ball extremely well. Uh, Gola was my favorite player. And yeah, Tom Gola, of course, the LaSalle Explorers, great star. And then I had another opportunity for a great player uh, to uh, get to know a great player at LaSalle, and that was Michael Brooks. Michael Brooks played on the Pan American team that I coached. We won the gold medal that year, and I think that Brooks was the closest thing to Michael Jordan that I ever saw. Brooks was a great player, and an absolutely great kid to coach. He's Michael Brooks, one of my five all-time favorite kids that I got to coach. Another one of the great big five players. Saw Michael Jordan last night in uh, Charlotte where the Knicks were playing. Now he's an owner of a basketball team. Nice block shot there. And now right is called for traveling. Traveling is the goal. So we're tied at two after the missed technical fouls that were wiped off because of the, the streamers and we get down to the, the game at hand. Mike Crispino, Bob Knight here in Philadelphia. And a foul on a three-point field goal attempt in Temple will get three free throws for Quentin DeCozzi. It, it wasn't it wasn't just a foul. Uh, it was a terrible shot taken, an off-balance shot uh, that you didn't need to put any pressure on. That's giving away three points. That's just something you can't let happen. You've got to have better judgment than that when you're on defense. And DeCozzi, who is... Uh, 67% free throw shooter makes the first. 
But we're two that shouldn't have happened. We're right now two, and we're going for three that just shouldn't have happened. And this is the kind of thing when you get into a close ball game and it's over with, there have been three points here that just should not have been scored because of a very poor defensive play. There's John Gini, and he's probably saying the same thing you just said, no, but kid. on the sideline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm sure he is. All right, LaSalle has uh, the ball back as the ball is deflected out of bounds. This is Khalid Lewis, a redshirt junior, plays in the backcourt. And Jordan Price has it. He's a redshirt sophomore from Decatur, Georgia. Pull-up jumper, and it's good. He knocked down an 18-footer. That was really a nice, quick setup. He stepped into it. He backed off of it and then moved right into the shot. That was an excellent setup for a shot. Gets an opportunity from straight on off target and a foul is called. Williams had an, a great opportunity for a little shot fake and let the defense get past him. Yet the defense bothered him a little bit because he took it up too soon. It, we don't see enough of a pass being made. Kid catches it, looks at the bucket, somebody comes at him, shot oh. fake, and you have something better going. That's his first team second. Just underway here at the Palestra. Steve Zach was called for the foul, so Temple will maintain possession. And they're having some trouble. They finally get it in. Both teams are very quick defensively out on the perimeter. They apply good pressure. Both coming in with a record of four and three. Temple's been undefeated at home four and it's Cummings again. And he's been short early. Well, that was a heck of a shot under pressure that Cummings made from that deep corner. And a drive inside, an awkward looking shot, and Temple comes up with it. Cummings running the show. Cummings did a good job not taking the shot that second time. The cozy launches. It's a triple. He's good. The Temple from outside shooting well so far. 10-4 early lead. They have not been a good shooting team percentage-wise on the season. Only 22% the Owls from outside the three-point arc. And a strong move inside by Jarrell Wright. You've almost got to play that defensive, uh, a, a double defense on a guy in the post that gets the ball that low. He made a great move to his left hand, but they did a fairly good job of shutting him off going to the bucket. They say back in the day, professional athletes didn't play for the money, nor did they play for fame. They played for the love of the game. I'm here to say, some things haven't changed. people to push it. Push it real good. It's what you do. If you want to save 15% or more on car insurance, you switch to Geico. It's what you do. I'm pushing. I'm pushing it real good. Mom, where's Glitter Pony Dancer? Here it comes. We were running out of space, so I deleted it. What? Guys, get the hopper from Dish and record up to 2,000 hours of shows. Where's don't wait. Switch today and get $150. Call Dish now. Gamefly is hands down the best way to rent and buy games. Rent as many games as you want. There is no catch. Go to Gamefly.com right now and start your free 30-day trial today. 
Now offering movie rentals. Products shown ready D through N. Kansas State, Baylor, tonight on ESPN. Two top ten schools collide today on ESPN. Rondé Hollis Jefferson and the high-flying Arizona Wildcats battle Kevin Pankos and the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Gonzaga, Arizona today at 515 Eastern on ESPN, part of Jimmy V Week. ESPN, the home court of college hoops. Along with Bob Knight, I'm Mike Crispino here in Philadelphia where Temple off to a good start. 10-4 lead. Both teams shooting 50%. We got the bands going. We got the streamers flying. We got <laughs> Philadelphia College basketball at its best. Well, it's very unique. There's not a place in the country where basketball is appreciated more than right here in the Palestra. There's Fran Dumpy. 33rd time he's coached against his alma mater. Has to be a strange feeling. He's 25 and 7 against LaSalle, but he was a great player at LaSalle himself. Very good player. I had that same experience, Mike. I spent a lot of time over the years coaching against my alma mater, Ohio State, and it was never uh, one that you uh, were anxious to play. Yeah, but did you feel good beating them? That's no, the question. No, not really. Not, you know, there were my, my coach, Fred Taylor, who was a great coach. I had to coach against him for about 10 years or so, and you know, obviously, I was happy for our kids that we won when we did, and, but didn't feel good about beating a team that Coach Taylor had. And it's not the easiest thing in the world in coaching. Oh, oh great nice fade down low on a thunderous jam by Great Temple. Pass. That was Devontae Watson, the junior. He only averages two points a ball game, so he's right at his average already. Temple a 12-5 advantage. Williams just made a great pass on uh, that was as quick a pass I've ever seen a big kid make. Well, Sal having trouble with a man-to-man -man defense at Temple. Shot clock down to 12, and Zach puts up a, an errant shot, doesn't catch the rim. Now he had an opportunity for a fairly easy jumper, but I don't know why he got into so much trouble there. The ball is deflected out of bounds. It'll be LaSalle basketball. Here's a look at that last play. Great pass and take it right to the bucket. There, uh, a player gets credit for a bucket, and the bucket is a result of a great pass. Temple won the start of their season in good fashion, then lost to Duke and to St. Joe's earlier this week. And here's a steal, and Cummings is going to get two free throws as Amar Stukes had a foul. Up. Boy, Cummings had great hand work out here. We're going to see a pair of really good hands here in just a moment. Watch that right there. He jabs it away and still picks it up. Not going to see a better effort on defense than that. Four early turnovers by the Explorers. Now, a game like this, Coach, both teams are kind of home teams. It really isn't a home and away situation. So. You can't blame, you know, the Explorers being on the road for having some turnovers early, can you? Well, you know, the one thing I always thought in coaching, Mike, was you got to stay out of that. You know, if we were going on the road and the court was 120 feet long and 80 feet wide, then it's different. But they're all the same. The bucket's 10 feet high. And you have to work, I think, from a coaching standpoint at stressing. We're playing basketball. It doesn't make any difference where we go. Temple with a nine point advantage early. Now they're doing a great job. Temple's doing a great job of doubling up on the inside game for LaSalle. Right hangs in the air, and that one won't go. Three opportunities for LaSalle. Cummings on the run. Drive and kick. And DeCozzi's fouled on the perimeter by Roberts. Temple's D very strong inside. They're really, they're really doing a great job defending against the postman inside. They get that double team on him, and they've had a lot of trouble. They've had the ball in there, but they've had a lot of trouble getting it to the bucket. Jalen Bond comes in for Temple. He's a junior from Philadelphia, Plymouth White Marsh High School. This Temple team last year, Coach, they gave up 78 points a ball game. They were not good this year, holding opposition to under 61, so they've improved. South, only five points in the opening six minutes. Right to the rim, misses, but he's hit. And there'll be two free throws. Fouls number 23, Devontae Watson. That's his second 
Second on Devontae Watson, and Terrell Wright will go to the line. Really, again, a shot was set up by a pass. All youngsters out there ought to keep in mind that virtually every good basket comes from a good pass. And the better you can pass the ball, the better player you're going to be. Wright misses the first. He's a 68% free throw shooter, averaging 12 points, seven rebounds. The senior went to Dobbins Tech in Philadelphia. John Giannini was saying he's playing a little nervous in his senior year. Does that happen with a guy in his final season? Well, you'd hope it doesn't because he should be at a point where, hey, I'm really looking forward to this. I want this to be my best year. Uh, I worked hard to get to this point. Here's Cummings hangs in the air. Awkward shot. Bond got it blocked. A battle on the boards. A lot of contact, and the Explorers come up with it. I'm not sure that somewhere in there, like, there wasn't a foul. <laughs> oh, nice blow by move that time from Khalid Lewis. The uh, red shirt junior from Trenton, and uh, LaSalle needed that. Lewis did a great job of holding up on the dribble and then seeing an opening and taking advantage of it. There was an opening there. It wasn't as though he had to take a dribble into traffic. He made a great move because he waited and saw what was there, giving him a chance to get to the bucket. Josh Brown is coming to the game for Temple. He wears number one. Uh, the cozy on the baseline can't get a shot off. Three from the corner, Barry. There must be a magnet over there in that corner or something. That's either three or four of those kids have hit from that very same spot. Obi and then Shinoya. The cozy made a great pass leading up to that bucket. Temple's outside shooting's been strong. Here's right again to the rim, and that one rolls out. A little unlucky. Bond, the big kid for Temple, did a great job defensively on that last possession. He eliminated an opportunity for a bucket inside. And they worked to Cummings. They go over the defense. Bond double teamed. Kick out to Cozy, the jump shot. Good. And the Owls are scintillating from outside. And John Giannini wants a timeout. De Cozy, going back to that shot you talked about, De Cozy did a great job concentrating on the basket because he had a lot of pressure coming at him. And De Cozy, one of the better Temple outside shooters at 35%, knocks it down. And Temple with a 20 to 8 lead here in the opening eight minutes as they talk it over. What's going on inside that auto right now? Well, I would think that they're going to spread things out a little bit uh, offensively. They being LaSalle. Here we're going to see Temple's buckets right here. Nice little fake. Gets the ball back outside where they have the shot open. Really, really good thought uh, with the ball right there. And then there's the next one. They're going to get from back, pass back out on top, get set, good shot. Well, Temple with the lead, 20 to 8. LaSalle's had troubles in the first half of games. Temple's done a great job of getting open shots and taking the ball maybe part way to the bucket and then getting it back out to somebody. I think they've gotten four threes out of a pass that has come out of traffic. LaSalle has been outscored by 32 points in the first half of their first seven games. They've come back in the second half. Outscored their opponents by 26. A bank shot. Wait a minute. How did that happen? That was Jordan Price. He didn't call glass. <laughs> I think Jordan was as surprised as we were. 20 to 10 now. LaSalle needed it. I'll tell you, they were down 12. Here's DeCozy, pull up jumper, and DeCozy's on fire. He's got 11 now. 22 10. Boy, DeCozy was really smart and sharp with that. He took a little look at what was there, and he had room for the dribble, really paying attention. Now they've got to double up there. Crashing the boards, and LaSalle gets right to the rim, and he gets the putback, and he's fouled. Time out on the floor. Temple 22 and LaSalle 12. And Quinton DeCozy has been the man so far for the Owls. With that first fall of snow, 
It's time for us to go and spread some fun. are filled with love and Hellsberg Diamonds celebrates the spirit of the season. Our diamond ring is the perfect way to express your love. Hellsberg Diamonds. I am loved. Stamps.com is the best. I don't have to leave my desk and get up and go to the post office anymore. With Stamps.com, you can print real U.S. postage for all your letters and packages. I have exactly the amount of postage I need the instant I need it. Can you print only stamps? No. First class? Priority mail. Certified. International. And the mailman picks it up. I don't leave the shop anymore. Get a four-week trial plus $100 in extras, including postage and a digital scale. Go to stamps.com slash TV and never go to the post office again. Huge day for the ACC. Florida State. Georgia Tech. Tonight. 8 Eastern. ABC. Tonight, in a crucial Big 12 matchup, the Kansas State Wildcats battle the Baylor Bears. The critical playoff implications on the line. ESPN College Football, number nine, Kansas State, number six, Baylor, tonight at 745 Eastern on ESPN. As they try to determine the final four in football. Mike Crispino, Bob Knight here in Philadelphia. Temple's made seven field goals, and they've got six assists. I know that makes you pretty happy when you see that you really like to see a basket scored because of a good pass now when they're coming out of this huddle they be in the south I think whether it's Zach or Wright or both of their big kids they've got to get some room inside they've got to be spread they've gotten two buckets here just in their last two possessions inside and they're not doing a really good job of getting the ball in there at the right time but I think it's going to be very important for the big kids uh, from LaSalle uh, to be inside, available, not jammed up against the baseline, come up a little bit higher, whether it's Wright or whomever in there. And Wright rolls it in. Terrell Wright shot the most free throws on his team by, uh, this year, along with Jordan Price. Going to go to a 2-3 zone here. get somebody coming in the middle of that zone just to occupy people and the miss off the baseline tracked down by Steve Zach the zone will be a little bit different for Temple to go against they did a good job with the zone that last time LaSalle did last possession well for years Temple made a living playing zone oh, defensive with John Cheney right well, John, who, John, who is one of my all-time favorite people, John Cheney. There's no better guy in coaching than John Cheney. Well, Khalid Lewis just made that basket in LaSalle back within seven. Now they work it to Brown, and Josh Brown knocks it down. So Temple's outside shooting on the season, only 22%. But here this afternoon, they've been sharp. Bond made a great pass inside, back out, but he's also got to be able to make a little shoulder fake and score from inside. They did a good job getting it in there, and Bond was in great position. Temple four of six from behind the arc this afternoon. That's just what Fran Dunphy likes to see. Here's Zach now. Hard drive inside, and he's able to draw the contact. Zach will go to the line to shoot two. As, as, as Zach is moving toward, there has to be help. And the defense against him is riding on his shoulder, not in front of him. You can't take a big, strong kid like Zach and get on one side or the other of him defensively. You've got to take him head on. So he's got to run right through you to get somewhere. Well, Zach outweighed his opponent right there, Olby. And then Shinoya by 20 pounds, so you're trying to deal with a guy who's driving it at you. I, I, I thought you were going to say closer to 50. <laughs> you, you either got better vision than I've got or something. I'm thinking to myself, he's got no chance of keeping him off the baseline unless he squares up. 
I'm the guy wearing glasses, not you. <laughs> well, you've got to penetrate against that, that zone a little bit into the gaps. Make a pass fake. Don't let them know every move that you make. Brown, take it away and then come back. You don't want to always pass in the same direction where you catch the ball from. You want to make the change in direction. Now Brown penetrates and a floater off target. Rebounded by Zach. Zach starting to control the defensive boards. They're dropping back off uh, in, in that zone, Temple is. And they're making it a little difficult, more, more, much more difficult than it was before to get the ball close to the bucket. It's been a big move, good move for the Owls. Now Price with a three. Long, but chased down by Dingle. Daniel Dingle in the ballgame. Redshirt sophomore for Temple. Out of the Bronx, St. Raymond's High School. Nice feed down low. A block shot by Zach. Steve Zach has been controlling the paint here the last couple of minutes. Boy, they've got him in a great position because to get to the bucket inside, they've got to go through Zach. Now right goes reverse and lays it in. You, we've mentioned it before, but you cannot play the, the offensive postman on the side. You've got to be squared up to him so he can't squeeze by you. And that wasn't the case on the last possession for LaSalle. Wright's got nine points now. Cummings, a little pull up. That stems the tie for the moment. Temple back up by nine. He did a good job of reversing the ball that time and getting it to a guy that wasn't being harassed when he went up for the shot. There's good position with the shooter. Eight points for Cummings. Now Lewis in the paint, and his floater goes in. Khalid Lewis with a nice shot. Not only that, but he had a really good fake to set that up to get himself open as he moved to his left. Josh Brown dives in, and he's fouled. So Brown, the guard, gets in the paint, gets himself two free throws. Timeout on the floor. LaSalle fell behind big early, but they're bouncing back with shots like that from Khalid Lewis. Enter a new world. Build a mighty empire and take on your enemies. In Forge of Empires, now for browser, iPad, and iPhone. Play free at foe.tv. Here it comes. We were running out of space, so I deleted it. What? Guys, get the hopper from Dish and record up to 2,000 hours of shows. We Don't wait. Switch today and get $150. Call Dish now. on the go, rushing between friends, family, and places. With the UVerse app, it's easy to manage entertainment from wherever the day takes us, even while we're on the move. There's programs to browse, schedules to view, DVR recordings to plan. We can do it all, anytime and on virtually any device. UVerse goes where we go. Who's the master? The painter? with a forger. We have been tasked to find and protect buildings, monuments, and art. Looks like you're giving the orders now, Captain. You're right. Keep it, boys. Just Bye. walk. Not a marriage proposal. We're doing what we have to define myself. We're about to go next level, Cam. Upgrade to U300 today and get three months free. Go to Channel 9910 now to order. Help us beat cancer. The Me Foundation awards 100% of direct donations and net proceeds of events to fund cancer research. Log on to JimmyV.org or call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V to donate. Jimmy V Week on the ESPN family of networks. We're here in the Palestra. Mike Crispino, Bob Knight. Temple moving the ball well early. Temple's done a great job getting the ball. Uh, 
Along with that, LaSalle has not closed really well on the outside shooting. Now they do a really good job covering up there, but now they're late getting out. Here we're going to see really good reverse of the ball. Defense comes out of it making a bad attempt. You can't, you can't make a bad attempt on a pass that takes you away from fronting a shooter. Oh, you say bad attempt. What does that mean? Well, one, one you don't make the interception? Or? No, here's a pass. You've got a guy here and the guy 15 feet away from him, and the pass is made, and somebody makes a shot trying to get the pass and can't. You've taken yourself out of the game then. Plus, you've given that guy who's receiving the ball a chance to get set and take the shot. On the pass, instead of going to the ball, go at the guy the pass is going to, and then you take the shot away from him. Yeah, so don't gamble looking for a steal if you're oh, going to get no, yourself out of well, position. Well, you'll see that. I mean, as long as you've broadcast and as good as you've been at it, you know, you see that every night. That the kid's trying to make a move on the ball, but the move has to be made on the shooter. All right, Josh Brown, another opportunity at the first. He's out of St. Anthony's in New Jersey, one of the legendary programs in high school basketball. Bob Hurley there. Good free throw shooter, 83% the lefty. Had a really nice touch, didn't you think? He was really calm up there with it. Nice, soft hands. There's something to be said for coming from a winning program in the yeah. high school level, right? Yeah, particularly that one. That one sent a lot of kids to play college basketball. Right, we're going to see some press action here now. Like a little 1-2-2 one, two, two zone, but they move it out, and it's a full court press. Seven and a half left in the first half. LaSalle's been playing from behind throughout the ball game. John Giannini's had a lot of success in the Big Five in the last couple of years, six and three in his last nine. The Sal's had a pretty good run in the NCAA tournament recently. Here's Darrell Wright, and he deals it to the cutting guard. DJ. Nice feed that time to DJ Peterson. It was a great look. Knowing where somebody was, they had shut him off a little bit inside, but he knew where the cutter was. You know, sometimes by, you don't say to yourself, how do I get out of this? You say, who can I get the ball to? <laughs> well, that one was a little bit too uh, optimistic, the pass throwing high and out of bounds. Here we're going to see. Okay, there we go. Look, good pass, good look. And moving without the ball was Peterson. They're starting to double on right. He's giving them trouble. Now, they're getting back in on top of him, which is what they didn't do a few possessions ago. It's going to take two guys to stop him in there. Right moves inside the left-hander in some traffic. The kick out. Shot clock down to three. And that one short. That was not a good possession. Uh, for LaSalle on offense. DeCozy fires, and again, Fenton DeCozy on fire. The fifth three by Temple today. Well, but what's happening over there, I think, Mike, is the defense is not moving on the pass. The defense is waiting till the catch occurs, and that's too late to get pressure on the shooter. When they're moving the ball against the zone, you've got to really go at the recipient of the pass, not at the pass. Well, they're trying to go up over the top and turn it over. And the Owls on the move. Will Cummings has eight points. DeCozy's got 14. And the Sal on the move. They have numbers if they hurry. And Lewis, a lot of contact there, but no whistle. All right, here we're going to take a look at the defense, the job they do doubling up on the ball. They do a great job of it. Pass out. Nobody recovers to the pass like they should. Now, when you see a double like that and you're a teammate, what are you supposed to be doing? There? Get yourself open. Get, get where you, you know, they got two on one, so that means we've got four against their three somewhere. Oh, backdoor feed for the bank shot by Temple. And Jalen Bond, the transfer from Texas, has a contribution. 34-22 Owls. Back in that 2-3 zone now with Temple. Now Zach, the kick out. 
Pump it down low to right. A little spin. Jump hook is off the mark. He's got to hit that one because there was not the second man. Remember we were talking about that? He was all by himself. Head and shoulders fake to the baseline. Come to the middle. And no second defender. Four and a half left in the first. Another sharp pass into the interior. But Temple fumbles at their fourth turnover of the ball game. One of the things you got to be careful of is that you don't make the pass into a bad circumstance. Now, that was very good there. Little bounce pass, drop pass. But the last possession uh, that we had with Temple with the ball, it was a bad pass inside. It wasn't going to uh, result into anything positive, and it cost him a possession. Use the dribble a little bit against that zone. Go into some pressure. That was a careless move right there. Temple with a steal. Trying to expand a 12-point lead with four minutes to go here in the first half from the Palestra in Philadelphia on Jimmy V Week. Mike Crispino, Bob Knight. Place rocking. And that jumper just rims out by Williams. He got set well. He just missed a shot. It was a good shot. And the South turned it over three of their last four possessions. They got to get some more production here on the offensive side. A three-pointer. Well short. All white jerseys on the defensive glass. Yeah, there were three on at that time. You're absolutely right. I brought the zone out a little bit further here. Now they're in man-to-man -man now. And Cummings steps back. The veteran. A senior from Jacksonville, Florida, directs traffic, gives to Josh Brown. Brown weaves his way in, and the jump shot is no good. A battle for the rebound, and it's going to be LaSalle basketball. A good shot, just they don't all go in. There was good patience on the part of the offense. They did a very good job with it. All right, a timeout. We'll be back. Temple by 12. To me, there are three things. ACDC is back with their new album, Rock. 34-22, 11 field goals, 10 assists. They've been helping each other very well to this lead. Really, really good play from, from Temple's standpoint has been DeCozy's play. DeCozy's just done a great job on the offensive end, not just with the shooting part of it, but with getting the ball to people. Uh, he's as good a guard as I've seen play so far this year, at least in what he's doing here today. Yeah, Clinton DeCozzi has made all three of his threes. Temple five of eight from behind the arc. Right now, LaSalle yet to make a three-point field goal. Uh, so that's where the difference is in the ballgame. Well, DeCozzi has two assists along with the points that he scored. And... Cozy, who averages 13 a ball game, hadn't shot it very well this year, just over 38 uh, percent. But you know, if you look at Temple and the way they've shared the ball today, that's a big thing that coaches talk about. Every they have six guys with assists. Yeah, and that's just an example of people looking for people with the ball. You know, a lot of times you'll see Mike, a guy catches it and he immediately puts it on the floor. These kids, these Temple kids, have been catching it and looking to see where they can take it with the pass that's going to lead to a shot. Now a runner by Price, and it drops in. Difficult shot, 34-24. Made a nice move. He saw a little opening and didn't take himself into pressure. He got it stopped and up before anybody could get to him. It was really a good move that Price made. Temple had a tough year last year, only nine wins. They lost 17 of the last 21. All kinds of trouble on defense. But Fran Dunphy hoping for more this year. He's got a couple other transfers for eligible to play in the second semester, which will really help him in a hand check on the outside that time against LaSalle and Devontae, or rather, Khalid Lewis. Temp Temple will get Devon, uh, Devin Coleman, the kid from Clemson, and they get Jess... Morgan from UMass back in a couple weeks and that should make a big difference with their offense. Well, I think that these two teams are pretty well put together right now. Now that doesn't mean that it'll last forever, but I they've gone away from the zone. And Sal extending their pressure. Cozy in the paint. That's short and Zach has another rebound. 
Well, the cozy spent a little bit too much time bouncing the ball in that possession. Steve Zach's got six rebounds for LaSalle already. Here's Roberts. That's no good, and LaSalle's explorer is still over from outside the arc. You know, LaSalle on one pass took an outside shot. And uh, you don't want to do that in a tough game like this. You want to you want to probe and you want to look into things. Make make three passes and then see what you've got and then go after something. Unless that guy's wide open, you got to have more than one shot. Never leave your feet. <laughs> I mean, I'm going from one thing, but don't leave your feet defending. Now you're putting the kid to the line who's going to score two points when there should have been no score here whatsoever. Team seven. Right now, you're reading John Giannini's mind on the LaSalle, co on the LaSalle coaching uh, staff because it's happened a couple times to Cozy's made nice fakes and able to draw the foul. And, and see, when he's moving with the ball, you've got to keep your hands spread. Don't get your hands into a position where you're giving up points, and that's exactly what's going to happen here. Just one, but still may be the one that makes the difference. To Cozy, the game's high score, he's got 15. bread and butter right and he skips it cross court right into the temple bench another turnover by LaSalle you see the coaching staff wearing the suits now they don't touch the basketball they're not supposed to anyway John Giannini's got to make a quick substitution couldn't get it to happen here in the final minute trying to get Amar Stukes into it Good shot, fake. Too much trouble. Had to pull up at six feet. Don't carry the ball into trouble. And Roberts is fouled and he drops it in. Aggressive move. And that time by Cleon Roberts, the redshirt sophomore from Miami, and he'll get a chance for a three-point play. Well, you know, that's a big play coming toward the end now. He, if he can hit this and... They're going to get the ball back at least one more time. LaSalle will get one, at least one more crack at it. And I'm sure that Temple will run the clock down to some degree. They're not going to come right down and take a shot. Or Temple may look for a shot in the first 10 seconds, which would give them two possessions. LaSalle trying to snap a three-game losing streak. They fell to number seven, Virginia, number nine, Villanova, after that 4-0 start they had. Three-point play, though, cuts the lead to eight. I think they're going to use up a lot of time. I think they're just going to play to get a shot, and then... Well, Cummings, I don't know if that was an alley-oop pass or a shot, but it didn't catch the iron, and now LaSalle think, gets the last I shot. I think it slipped in his hand, and now uh, not only did they have a uh, not get two possessions, they didn't do anything with the one possession they had. Well, right now, you've got to go. You've got to get in there at 10 seconds. Uh, Josh Brown fouled him on the drive in. That was the one, Josh Brown. And, and the sixth team foul on six. Temple. So they're still one short of a one and one. And a timeout call by, I believe, John Giannini and LaSalle. I think after this, I'm oh, trying to think seconds. what I might try to do. There's seven seconds left. They're going to shoot a free throw. And I think when you Double shoot it, make it or miss it. You want to put pressure on uh, on Temple going the other direction to prevent them from getting an opportunity to score here at the buzzer. I think it's going to be side out. I think they still they only have 16 fouls. Uh, I think Fran Dunphy instructed his man to foul. I think you're right. I think they've got one possession left and they play it right and Temple should not have another possession. As a very good observation, my friend. <laughs> I, I just saw where the official was standing. That's all. He went to the sideline here. I don't, I don't want your brilliance and recognition on that particular, <laughs> on that particular play to go unnoticed by your saying that an official helped you. Well, I appreciate your compliment. I do. Well, there's Fred Duffy. He likes to go with the jacket off. Now you were a sweater guy. You didn't wear ties. Duffy doesn't like the dress code at all. He goes right to the tie and shirt. All right, they inbound it. Final seconds. Price takes a bump, missed the shot, batted around. They get it off at the buzzer, and it goes in. Now Roberts 
with five late points for LaSalle, and that makes a difference. They go to the locker room down only six. That was about as quick a thinking shot as you're ever going to see. With time running out, he didn't panic with it. He just grabbed it and went up really, really well. That was a really uh, maybe important ending to what uh, to what LaSalle did. They at least are going off the court with the last bucket. And the band plays on for the Temple Owls, but the lead went from 11 to just six in the final seconds here at the Palestra. So a big five matchup, first of the season. The place rocking, the streamers falling, and Temple's early hot shooting from three-point range gives them the lead at the break. Yeah, six, six threes from one little spot. Yeah, same spot. I, th actually. I think right there, you've got it. You can't move toward the ball. We were talking. You've got to go to the recipient of the pass when you're playing zone. Going at the ball doesn't help anything. Go see where it's going. Defend the man, not the ball, and then you'll take that easy shot away from it. Now, do you think Temple's going to continue to double Jerome Wright? They did a lot of that in that first touch. I think they will. All right, there's a look. LaSalle shooting 58%, winning the battle of the boards. Ten assists for Temple in the ballgame. Eight of nine from the line. They have the lead, 35-29. We'll have our studio after this break. In a race, it's a... Reading Terminal Market near 33rd Street in Philadelphia. From the Plester in Philadelphia, it's LaSalle... And Temple, the Explorers and the Owls, it's all part of Jimmy V Week for Cancer Research on ESPN. We continue our commitment to the V Foundation and Jim Valvano's dream to defeat cancer. Now, you got all kinds of choices there, and you got all kinds of former Big Five players. Right there on the right, that's the L train. That's Lionel Simmons. And on the left, that's Tim Perry. Guys who played in the mid to late 80s, played against each other for a couple of years. And that man, Lionel Simmons, he could score some points. As you can see, he put a bundle up for LaSalle in his career that lasted four years. Mike Crispino, Bob Knight, back here in Philadelphia. Well, I wouldn't want right outside so much. He's handling the ball out there. Get him in there where he can go to the bucket. Right there. Well, right comes up with the offensive rebound, and he gets his shot block, but he saves it. Another opportunity for LaSalle. They had a good job on the boards in the first half, Coach, 18-0 to 11 so the explorers got some second chances out of that oh what a shot what a shot that time as he drove inside jordan price that is a big bucket starting the second half for lasalle it is an extension of how they ended the first half now they've got it down uh, and cummings misses the drive he goes down hard and they've got some numbers as price is fouled on the way in so seven straight points by the explorers that cut the lead to four well, they've done a really good job here in getting back into the game, and they've continued it into the second half. That doesn't always happen. Those kids have been very, very good at giving them a chance now. Well, the foul was called before the shot was taken, so from 12 down to 4 down, the Explorers. And moving inside, power move and converting. The Explorers continue to attack the Tim. That's Darrell Wright. It was a great, great effort on the offense and very poor defensive positioning. Really poor defensive positioning. Well, he took a shot in the face. Look at this. Ouch. You're not going to come in here in the paint in Philadelphia and not get hit. All right, timeout on the floor, right to the line. LaSalle within two, just a minute and change into the second half. Kansas. You're watching the American Conference on ESPN. Temple with a two-point lead over LaSalle, Palestra, Philadelphia, the old barn. Place rocking over 8,000 crammed into every corner. Got a lot of bench seating, so it's old school there. Jordan Price, a redshirt sophomore for LaSalle, has gotten them back in it. You know, he's hit a couple buckets here, actually three toward the end. He's made a couple of really good passes, but it's been a heck of a team effort uh, getting back from whatever it was, 11 or 12-point deficit to where they've only got a two-point deficit now. 
And I think that on the other end of things, Temple just got, what do you think? Temple wasn't playing with the same kind of effort toward the end that they were kind of like, well, we've got good lead, you know, where it's going. Uh, and then, boy, they got drilled those last seven minutes. What is that about having a lead? It, it, you kind of relax, don't you, mentally? I don't know what that is. It's like hitting a really good shot in golf <laughs> and walking up thinking you got it under control, and the next one goes in the creek about 50 yards to your left. You had to go there, didn't you? You're bringing back some bad memories for me now. Uh, LaSalle within one, their, their lead, their only lead, was 2 nothing early in the game. I know you're, what you're talking about very well, as a matter of fact. Here's Cummings. Sal's been up in the pressure, pushing their defense out. Doing a good job with man-to-man -man defense to start the second half. There's help that came, but it didn't shut off the baseline. And they, they got a bucket there. But when, when there's a drive made on the baseline, the big kid playing defense, or even the guy playing the ball, has got to get his foot on the, on the baseline. Then there's nowhere for him to go. Well, that's a six turnover by... The Temple Lamar Stukes uh, having a conversation, a very animated conversation over there with John Giannini as he goes to the bench. Things get heated when you're playing a big five game in Philadelphia. All right, they double team and the ball is loose. They're going to have to do something other than go inside because now. We've got a defense. We've got a defense from Temple that the last three possessions has really shut off the middle. So a little pass faking inside. Uh, look to take the shot when it's open. Right, full court pressure here by LaSalle. Temple hasn't made a field goal in over seven minutes going back to the first half. So that 12 point lead has almost disappeared. and Steve Zach clears the board. But that was very good offensive play. Big man comes in, gets fed, missed the shot. Uh, you're not going to make them all. They come back with that same little maneuver, next possession. Zach has eight rebounds, all in defensive glass. Sal for the lead, and a foul is called as the effort by... Khalid Lewis has been outstanding here in the last few moments. But but again, Cummins just puts him on the line. Cummins sets up the two points. He he reached to grab. He grabbed. Uh, you can't do that. You got to keep those hands out of things on defense. This should have been a uh, change of possession without uh, Lewis at the free throw line. This. If he gets this, that's a point that shouldn't have been scored. Well, ball game tied. Temple led by as many as 12 in the first half. LaSalle has bounced back, and they're even. Both teams four and three. This is a big game for them early in the season. The feet are much more important defensively than the hands are. Great fake. Another good fake. Good, good defense there. Take away the three. Dingle try to drop it down, and it's going to be Temple basketball, 11 seconds to shoot. That was an extremely good defensive possession by LaSalle. They shut off every shooting opportunity there was. They're closing out well here in the last few minutes. Uh, the cozy step back jumper that's off the back rim. Did another good, did a good job there. LaSalle has not given up a good shot this half. Temple came in shooting only 36% from the field on the season. In the first half, they were over that at 44%. Now they're going cold. LaSalle scored the last 11 points of the game going back to the first half. Stukes to the rim. Will not catch the iron, and that will be a held ball. No ball to go. LaSalle's defense has really tightened up lately. They've done a good job on the ball without creating a foul situation. 
and that's important. Explorers try to take the lead. They weren't getting the kind of shot that they were getting in the first 17 minutes of the first half. Cummings to the rim, and he leaves it for Bond, and the ball is stripped. But it ends up on the baseline, and it'll be Temple basketball. Well, Temple's offense is kind of stalled here. What are they going to do to get it going again? Well, I think they've got to look inside. They've got to spread themselves out a little bit and maybe have some exchange work inside. In other words, high-low situation for their two big guys. So they just, just have the one big guy in. Well, the back door is missed, but Williams tips it home. Well, they got to the rim, and Williams. Temple takes the lead back. It was a big bucket for him there. He made a great drive to the bucket, but there again, there wasn't any defense between him and the bucket. Four minutes gone by in the second half. Mike Crispino along with Bob Knight at the Palestra in Philadelphia. I think I'd much rather have Zach inside than outside where he was. Cummings, dribble penetration, hangs in the air, doesn't get it to go, it's tapped around, and Zach comes up with another defensive rebound, and a whistle blows. Steve Zach's been controlling a defensive glass, and LaSalle within two, just underway in the second half from the Palestra in Philadelphia. To me, there are three things we all should do every day. Number one is laugh. Number two is think. Number three is you should have your emotions move to tears. Think about it. If you laugh, you think, and you cry, that's a full day. Cancer can take away all my physical abilities. It cannot touch my mind. It cannot touch my heart. And it cannot touch my soul. The Jimmy V Foundation for Cancer Research, its motto is don't give up. Don't ever give up. They say back in the day, professional athletes didn't play for the money, nor did they play for fame. They played for the love of the game. I'm here to say, some things haven't changed. Cases for iPhone and Galaxy. Get 25% off select cases at lifeproof.com. After I played FanDuel the first time, I was hooked. People are going crazy for these new one-week fantasy football leagues at fanduel.com. With FanDuel, there's no season-long commitment. FanDuel lets you play in one-week fantasy football leagues for real money. Assembling the ideal team on FanDuel was a blast. Try FanDuel today, and we'll match your first deposit dollar for dollar up to 200 bucks. On FanDuel, I've won over $62,000. Go to FanDuel.com now and click on the microphone to get up to $200 free. Enter promo code COUCH1. That's promo code COUCH1. Almost a nine-minute scoreless drop for Temple allowed LaSalle back in it. They're within two now here early in the second half. You can see that the signage up there in the Temple uh, student section uh, talking about LaSalle's A-10 championships. Uh, there are zero over there, so I think they're making fun of the LaSalle A-10 history. <laughs> I'm just a wild guess by me. What do you think? I kind of agree with you. That's something that kids are good at. <laughs> And meanwhile, the uh, LaSalle colors and the Laker colors are the same, so we got some Laker jerseys sprinkled in there somewhere. 
Uh, LaSalle's gotten some help from a couple of transfers. Jordan Price, Cleon Roberts, uh, Price from Auburn, Leon Roberts from Georgia Southern. By the way, his uncle, William Roberts, played tackle for the New York Giants in their Super Bowl championship with uh, Bill Parcells back in the mid-'80s. So there's some athletic history there, but they've really helped between them 13 points for John Giannini's team. Back in the zone now. I don't know again why Zach is outside against that zone. Get those two big kids. There, right there's where, ooh, he's got to take that shot. Gives to Roberts, and Roberts, nice touch. Boy, he's been a cool customer here this afternoon. A three-pointer, LaSalle's first of the game. They did a good job, uh, they being LaSalle, start the ball to the left and get it back to the right, and you've got an open shooter. Temple behind for the first time since 2-0 early in the game, and Williams goes crashing to the floor, and he'll get two free throws. Good look inside. Good reverse. Good set. He had his feet set. Really important for the shooter receiving the pass. Let's say he's right-handed, right-footed. He gets that right foot back so that when the ball's coming to him, he steps into the shot. That way, he's all ready to shoot the ball or fake rather than have to do some footwork after he gets the pass. Foot position and using it is very important in shooting. Temple takes the lead back 39 to 38. Fran Dunphy has won more games than any other coach here in this building. 171 wins, 56 losses, 11 and 4 since uh, coming to Temple. When he was at Penn, he won 160 games here, lost only 52, so he likes coaching in this building. Good coach, good guy. Now here's Lewis. This thing's become a nail biter. Looked like Temple was in command late in the first. Right. Kick out Price. And yeah. they say he double dribbled it. Good call. Double Good call. Dribble. When he had it, he he may have dropped it, but then dribbled it. It, it was not a bad call on the, on the official's part. Well, Temple will have it back, try to extend a one-point lead. Bringing the big kids out and then going back, setting that screen. LaSalle is very quick defensively. Now Cummings had a shot blocked by the big man, and Dingle commits a foul. Foul number two, Billy Cummings. That's his second team foul on the foul. You think about all the great coaches that have been in Philadelphia over the years Chuck Daly, Jack Ramsey, Tom Golan. I mean, you got some of the best in the country have come out of Philadelphia. This has been one of the great basketball cities in the country. Gino Oriema on the women's side. Jimmy Foster for years at Ohio State on the women's side. Well, we got the double post set up. Well, they threw it away. Uh, just not a good not a good shot, let alone a good pass. There wasn't any need for even thinking about a shot there. These teams are both very quick, Mike. That gives them a little advantage, and they get that step sometimes on the, on the offensive end. Two very quick teams. And Mark Williams, the sophomore from Cleveland, nice touch from outside. Boy, he just caught that and went up with a lot of confidence with that shot. Williams now has six, and Temple has regained the lead by three, 41-38. I think it's been a combination of both things. They've had some uh, some good work at both ends. They've had some patience on the offensive end. They've done a couple of things defensively. They're back here in the last couple of possessions playing like they did uh, early in the game. Now you talked earlier about Tom Gold and how he was a guy that you admired. Did, how did you find out about him? I mean, the television coverage was nil almost. No, well, not it wasn't great, but I just really followed it in magazines and one thing and another. And that was at a point, if I'm not mistaken, when Gola was either, I think, a junior, they won the NCAA championship. And he was the kind of player that just did everything really well. 
and and uh, I was very fortunate to in later years to have gotten to uh, gotten to know him just as I was fortunate with a couple of coaches here and Harry Lipwack and John Cheney you know there there is never a better guy for kids than John Cheney was. You know, back in the you know, 60s, 70s, some of these schools made great runs. I mean, 79, Penn was uh, was right up there. And the semifinal loss to Michigan State and Magic Johnson. I mean, you don't see it as often. LaSalle had a nice run in the tournament a couple years ago. But uh, these coaches here are real students of the game. Teams are well coached. Cummings traveled. He definitely moved his foot. Don't try to get too fancy with it. Slides those feet right, right here, right there. Has no no recourse but to call the walk. That looked like a little bit of a tired move footwork wise. Yeah, you know, but what he had was a little fake to the inside and then a bounce pass into the post. You've got to clear yourself when you have the ball feeding the post. You just can't stand there and hold it. You've got to fake with your feet one way and then make the pass the other way. Oh, left handed back shot put in that time. Nice play by Jordan Price, a red shirt sophomore. A big fan of a, a women's player, Maya Moore was asked about. He was asked about that. I was surprised to hear that. She's a great player on the women's side. And they missed the postman there. Cummins had a good shot at the big guy inside. Price is in double figures at 10. Now here's to Cozy, and he's stripped on the way in, but he's fouled. Time out on the floor. Here's that last LaSalle bucket. This is really a good bucket here going all the way, but there was help that wasn't utilized. Mom, where's Glitter Pony Dance Off? Here it comes. We were running out of space, so I deleted it. What? Guys, get the hopper from Dish and record up to 2,000 hours of shows. Where's Glitter Pony Don't wait. Switch today and get $150. Call Dish now. The holidays are filled with love, and Hellsberg Diamonds celebrates the spirit of the season. Our diamond ring is the perfect way to express your love. Hellsberg Diamonds. I am loved. Get on your feet, Monday Night Football, Falcons Packers, 815 on ESPN. Are you stuck with a slow computer? Thanks to internet clutter, junk files, and viruses. Well, my friend, help has arrived. MyCleanPC.com. First, the free computer diagnosis at MyCleanPC.com can tell you what's slowing down your computer. And then you simply activate MyCleanPC.com software to help speed up your computer and remove, <laughs> yes, even viruses. Yes! Bravo! Another save by MyCleanPC.com. Gamefly is hands down the best way to rent and buy games. Rent the game, test the game out, and if you love that game, you can buy it. It's super simple. There is no catch. Rent as many games as you want. No late fees for Gamefly at all. We don't have to go to a game store. With Gamefly, there's that much more time for gaming. If you're a gamer, go to Gamefly.com right now and start your free 30-day trial today. Now offering movie rentals. Products shown ready to through end. You gotta get Gamefly if you're a gamer. Temple 41, LaSalle 40, Constitution Hall in Philadelphia. You know, when you look at the stat sheet, Mike, <laughs> this game shouldn't really even be close. LaSalle, 12, uh, 12 turnovers, Temple 7 turnovers. LaSalle uh, is, is 
completely overwhelmed with with shooting and so forth through the statistics just point to like a 10 to 14 point lead uh, and that just shows that, that simple stats really don't mean everything a lot because there are some real changes in here that the, the number of turnovers is more uh, although Temple has had a poor assist record but but baskets and shots taken and the threes five against one uh, and and uh, the stats don't tell it all though all right so so you I mean I'm reading all the stats and they're meaningless <laughs> no, I, I didn't say <laughs> confusing, <laughs> let, confusing. Let, me, let me say confusing all because right. you're happy if you're John Giannini you're right in this thing oh, only yeah. down three and it doesn't look good well sure when you've given up they've gotten four more threes than you have they've gotten more uh, less turnovers than you have and to be, be right there has been a real tribute to the end of the first half for these guys. These guys being LaSalle, they've done a really good job uh, getting themselves back into this game. This is Cleon Roberts. He's had a nice game. And they're trying to face up and get it to happen. He lays it in left hand on a strong drive. Now, again, on that drive, the defense should have slid a second man right into his path, and he could not have gotten to the bucket. They really did a poor job of, I call it, I call it secondary defense. You've got primary defense, which is, and there's secondary defense that doesn't react. There were two guys that could have given secondary defense, and it would have taken the shot uh, selection away. And Cleon Roberts now for LaSalle, the third man in double figures with 10. But Jalen Bond has a chance to add to the Temple total Bond who plays about 21 minutes a game averaging four a game again a transfer from Texas played there a couple of years ago both free throws are good big guy shooting free throws is a heck of an advantage for you to have and Temple 14 of 15 on the line well, Bonds a Philadelphia kid came back home for his last couple of years of college and there's Roberts again right to the rim and his dunk missed but we have not seen good secondary defensive play in this game. There have been a lot of drives that have been a result of defense just watching the drive. It's another look. He's freakishly athletic, Cleon Roberts. Well, this, this is an athletic game, Mike. We're not going to see very many games with any better athletic uh, abilities on the parts of both teams that we're seeing here today. Now, what's John Giannini saying to him right now? He takes him out of the game, missed the dunk, then he commits a foul. What do you think? Well, I, I think, you know, he said, hey, you know, calm down a little bit. Calm down a little bit. You know, let, let's go easier. Or let's make sure of the bucket and trying to do something spectacular like the dunk. Conversation continues on the bench with Cleon Roberts and John Giannini, and they are not agreeing right now. I see Rohan Bradley, the other member of the Explorers, maybe trying to step in. Things are heating up. Now, good help defense right there. That's secondary defense. That was number two, Lamar Stoops. Peterson did a really good job just stepping into the path of the driver and it took it away from him. All right, now they've had their words and Cleon Roberts back in the game. So what do you think? He broke him down, built him up, and told him to go back in there? I think he probably patted him on the butt and said, let's go play. It, it's important that, that you pay attention to mistakes. And it's also important that you talk about the play when it's a good play. That was over and back right there. Temple turns it over. They've been a little sloppier in the second half, and they're struggling, but they still lead by three with 10-20 left. Now let's see if on a drive here we get a secondary defender. A little help, just a little. Nine drive, jumper rims in and out. It's D.J. Peterson made a bid for three to tie it. Temple hasn't gotten the kind of shot selection in the second half that they had in the first part of the first half. Great oh. back cut. 
Dingle wide open, and the big man, Jalen Bond, found him for an easy deuce. Price was totally out of the ball game. Had no idea what was going on there. Now he'll try a shot. Oh, he banks another one. I think that's two for him today. Maybe he does it on purpose. <laughs> I didn't see him working on that before the game, did you? Mike, I was about two seconds away from saying he makes a bad pass inside, <laughs> and now he takes a bad shot as it went in off the glass. That's how much I know, I guess. Well, that, that's when the coach goes, no, no, yes. Josh Brown. In and out. Boarded by Bond. Couldn't get it to go. Price attacks inside and tried to deal it to Zach, but it's, let's see, deflected out of bounds, I think. That was an impossible pass attempt there. They just had to back the ball out. All right, Jose Carrion stepped in to correct it. Here's another last look at that great backdoor cut. Now, they say if you hit it in the window, you know, that little square there, it'll go in the basket. And that's what happened. I think it might have been a blind guy that said that if he meant permanently. <laughs> and Sal turns it over. Here comes DeCozy, and he's stripped. Wall comes loose. Didn't need to try and dunk that. Just lay it back in. Game being played above the rim here. Jordan Price out. Lamar Stukes, the redshirt freshman, another Philadelphia kid, went to LaSalle College High School. He's in. Where's number two for the Explorers? Cummings and Khalid Lewis matching up. A really good defensive possession to this point. Bond banks it in. Except I started to say they're not getting pressure on the ball on top. Now that's an, how many three, how many misses have we had go in? That's three, isn't that's it? That's right. Well, what's good for one is good for the other. Here comes Lewis. This went too deep on the drive. Now Cummings blows through the defense and they turn it over. Here's a look at that last basket. All right. Defense doesn't get out on him. And he actually missed the shot that went, when it went in off the glass. He missed it by a lot. Did miss it by a lot. You're absolutely right. That's the third one we've seen. That might be a record. Temple. Temple is, is the beneficiary of, in the last three or four possessions, some very bad shot selection on LaSalle's part. And Temple's not taking care of the ball well in the second half, though. Five turnovers at four in the entire first half. Seven and a half remaining. Five-point advantage. Mike Crispino, Bob Knight here at the Palestra, the Cathedral of College Basketball in Philadelphia. Bond, another jumper. One's Good. off. Good pressure. Should have been a fake in a drive. He had room to do so. Up and down low to Jarrell Wright, and Wright is fouled. This was a really good move by Wright drawing that foul under those circumstances. We're in Owl Country, and the LaSalle Explorers trail by five. The Palestra, Philadelphia, back with more. ACDC is back with their new album, Rock or Bust, featuring Rock or Bust and Play Ball. Rock or Bust, available now. Well, another great thing about all this walking I've been doing is it's given me time to reflect on some of life's biggest questions. Like, if you could save hundreds on car insurance by making one simple call, why wouldn't you make that call? See, the only thing I can think of is you can't get any 
Bars. Ah, it's better. That's a beautiful view. I wonder if I can see Mount Rushmore from here. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Since the dawn of time, humankind has faced danger in its quest for prosperity and progress. From villages arise cities. From cities arise empires. And once close allies become the bitterest of enemies. What will your story be? Forge of Empires. Now for browser, iPad, and iPhone. Play free at foe.tv. Jones slips a tackle and scores. Betty fires. Car touchdown. Kansas State. Baylor. Tonight at 7.45 on ESPN. Sal Explorers have had a lot of success. Lately in the Plessner, won six of their last seven. They trail Temple here, seven or eight to go, and they've kind of gone amiss on the offensive end with their shot selection. Roberts missed the dunk one-handed. Oh, they haven't really had, uh, Temple hasn't had the kind of shot that they had in the first half. The South's done a really good job covering people out on the perimeter and not giving up those open threes I mean open three isn't the easiest thing in the world to stick in the bucket but they've taken shots away from uh, what Temple had in the first half there's a big difference in their shot percentage now we talked about what Fran Dunphy's done as a coach in this building but LaSalle Lester was their primary home from 1955 to 1989 and they've won 314 games here one lost only 174 so they're very familiar with this this building. Sal has a 20 to 8 advantage in the paint. That's how they're staying in this. It yeah. looks like. Yeah, absolutely. Temple's second half shooting has been way off. Only four of 16. Earl Ryan, a 68 percent free throw shooter. One of two. Under seven minutes remaining. Cummings in some trouble now. Almost a five second violation. And the shot clock down to ten. Cummings goes right to the rim and he's blocked by Zach. And the rejection leads to a breakout by the Explorers. Lynn Lewis. No good. The sound from outside has not been able to connect. But it's, it's always been my thinking when you get down into the last, maybe even the last 10 minutes, but certainly the last six and a half where we are, that the shot you take has to be something where you can draw the foul where you can either score from the free throw line or you can score uh, from outside or wherever but that was just an outside shot with no chance of drawing the foul and Cummings on the other side of things did try to draw the foul but he got his shot blocked how much of these last six minutes are mental how much of is this physical when you're trying to win a well game? you know an awful lot of like there was a really good switch right there and I think a lot of it is just simply concentration and Lewis a little overzealous defensively and he's whistled for the foul. And John Giannini does not agree. Well I'm not sure on that one. It was kind of like both kids kind of stumbling a little bit around. Neither one of them had really good uh, balance in what they were doing. This is a seven team foul so we go to one and one. The next team foul by Temple will get us to the one and one. And to Cozy. Goes to the line. Went to St. Joseph's in Touchin, New Jersey. Second all time scorer there to Jason Williams, who went on to play at Duke. And DeCozy has both 
free throws. Big difference there with the cozy in this half and the first half in terms of productivity offensively, and that that happens. But they've lot because where he is in the second half with just three points. Big difference in the first half. Yeah, he had 16 in the first half. Hasn't made a field goal in the second half. Only free throws. He's taken a couple of questionable shots too. And Price heads to the rim and he gets fouled. So there you go. Right, right down where you were talking about a moment ago. Get to the rim, try to get fouled, and get two free throws. That's exactly right. And then the defense again, if we were to run that right now, we would see that there was not a secondary defender. As soon as that guy starts his move to the bucket, the secondary defender has to start into play. And that could result in two points. Now it can only be one point. Here we go, right? There he goes, and that secondary defender was there, and he might as well have patted him on the butt when he went by because he didn't do anything else. And you really don't have much time to make that decision defensively, right? You've got to react as oh, soon as you see it coming. You know, you, as soon as he puts the ball down on the floor, that secondary defender is coming in to take the path away. And the missed free throws could be costly for LaSalle. They're down six. I think that secondary defender, Mike, is the most important thing there is in defensive basketball. And Cummings double teamed. Uh, almost turned it over. They do. Here comes Roberts. And this should be interesting, a two-hand dunk. Almost on cue, the Explorers defense turns it over on Temple. Four-point game. You got to really give a lot of credit to LaSalle uh, coming into this second half and doing what they've done in the last five minutes of the first half and the second half total because they have been uh, the more stable of the two here, which wasn't the case in the first half. Oh, Williams found Bond for an easy layup. The big man, what a nice look. Well, I think we had a situation where Roberts was completely out of position. And a whistle blows. It's a timeout call. Roberts just kind of fell asleep on that one. Here's a look at that last turnover. Just a Hail Mary pass. Roberts missed a dunk earlier. This time he went two hands. He made no mistake. Roberts has had a good day for the South. Got 12 points, 13 for Jordan Price, and 13 for Jarrell Wright. They've led the way for the South. Been 19 from Quentin DeCozy, the junior for Temple. Right, so both teams are in a bonus here. We got 4:17 remaining. Leon Roberts had a nice day. Two things with the free throw, Mike, are going to be decisive in these last four minutes. And those two things are you don't foul and you make your free throws. If one of those teams can do that, not foul and make their own free throws, then they're going to be the team that wins this last four minutes. down to eight and Lewis try to go to the rim and he gets fouled. Well here we have Cummins is complaining about the call but if we ran it again he did not move as a secondary defender. He reached out and slapped at the ball and if we get a look at it here. We'll take a look when we get back. Owls by six will have free throws coming up. Cancer can take away all my physical abilities. It cannot touch my mind. It cannot touch my heart. And it cannot touch my soul. The Jimmy V Foundation for Cancer Research. His motto is... Don't give up. Don't ever give up. <clears throat> Suffering from the flu is a really big deal. With aches, fever, and chills, there's no such thing as a little flu. 
So why treat it like it's a little cold? There's something that works differently than over-the-counter remedies. Attack the flu virus at its source with prescription Tamiflu and call your doctor right away. Tamiflu is FDA approved to treat the flu in people two weeks and older whose flu symptoms started within the last two days. Before taking Tamiflu, tell your doctor if you're pregnant, nursing, have serious health conditions, or take other medicines. If you develop an allergic reaction, a severe rash, or signs of unusual behavior, stop taking Tamiflu and call your doctor immediately. Children and adolescents in particular may be at an increased risk of seizures, confusion, or abnormal behavior. The most common side effects are mild to moderate nausea and vomiting. Ask your doctor about Tamiflu and attack the flu virus at its source. Here it comes. We were running out of space, so I deleted it. What? Mom! I'm gonna be sick. What was I supposed to do? Hold on to it till the end of time? Yes. Okay, guys, get the hopper from Dish and record up to 2,000 hours of shows. Mom! Then you can avoid these pony problems. Dish. Thank you, Dish. Okay. We're Glitter Pony Dancers! You did this. Well played, Dad. Well played. Don't wait. Switch today and get $150. Call Dish now. State, Georgia Tech, tonight, 8 Eastern, ABC. Tuesday night, the Jimmy V Classic is back on ESPN Live from the world's most famous arena, Madison Square Garden. First, Villanova faces Illinois, and then Indiana takes on Louisville in the 20th anniversary celebration for legendary head coach Jim Valvano. The Jimmy V Classic, Tuesday at 7 p.m. on ESPN, the home court of college hoops. Mike Crispino, Bob Knight, the fabled Palestra jammed here this afternoon for a Big Five matchup. Now you just talked about free throws, Coach, a moment ago. Temple 16 of 17, way above their average, and LaSalle 8 of 15. I mean, you hate to walk into a locker room after a game and see that maybe that cost you a game. Well, not only that, but just think about the domination of the free throw in the second half, or in the first half, is what put Temple in the lead in the first place. That plus the threes, and Dacuzzi, who was awfully good in the first half, I don't think has uh, shown anything in this half. Now, no field goals for him in this half. And that one rolls off the soft rim. And it goes in for Khalid Lewis. This kid from Trenton, New Jersey. The thing is, these two points right here were given up from a defensive player that didn't slide in and take away, that reached and grabbed. And if you can just eliminate the reaching and grabbing and become a secondary defensive player, you're a tremendous asset to your team. We're going to have some full court pickup here. Under four minutes remaining, and the Owls by four. They led earlier by 12, late in the first half. LaSalle made a big run, scored seven straight points, and has been close ever since. turned it over there as the temple offense looks a little disjointed Fran Dumpy now trying to get things organized the cozy being guarded by Cleon Roberts 18 to shoot to set him up with the dribble he's to Williams and the ball deflected nice play by Jarrell right defensively Lewis on the move and he nearly lost it. Oh, that was big play, big recovery there. Winding down. And John Giannini makes the call from the sideline. Let's see what they come up with. All right, skips it home. A great cut and a good finish, and it's a two-point game. Jarrell Wright now has 15 points. He's the team's high scorer, and a timeout called by Temple. This is really where, you, if you're Temple, you really want to go to the go to the bucket, but back off, get on the free throw line. Just a really great cut down the lane. 
So you're going to see it. Really great cut down the lane. Right there should have been help. There was no help there at all. Defense is such a team oriented thing that you do A and I do B and we stop that possession. Did you ever say this in practice on a defensive drill? Your head has to be on a swivel. Is that something you would say? Very, very similar to that. Hey, you got to see what's going on. And not just on the dribble, but on the cut. Like that last play that was worth that was worth two points uh, to Temple. Uh, there was a cut made, and if you just take away the cut, you uh, you don't give up a basket. Yeah, Mark Williams, the defender, was kind of looking toward the center of the offense, didn't see the cutter go right by him, yeah. and he gets a dunk. Absolutely. Well, Temple with more turnovers and field goals in the second half, and the game hanging in the balance. Well, Temple want to run a lot off the clock. They're going to run it down, and then they're going to have to get in a position to draw the foul. LaSalle's doing a good job defensively here. Both teams in the bonus. Well, they got to make a move here when it gets under 10. Now Cummings, three That's not three. what they want. That's an air ball, but it's picked off. Zach turned it over and handed it literally to Jalen Bond for an easy oh deuce. Oh, my. That may be the biggest play of the game thus far. Bond's got five steals in the game. Pick and roll Zach, and Zach gets fouled as he goes to the rim, so he'll get two free throws. Here's another look at it. Air ball. Zach rebounds. I think he thought he was out of bounds. You know what? He was out of bounds. The official did not call it. It ended up in a layup. Boy. That was an unlucky break that time for LaSalle. And Zach has the first. 74% free throw shooter. LaSalle is a team over 71%. Temple under 70%. And Zach has two, and we're back to two points. Two minutes left. The next foul by Temple. It's the double bonus for LaSalle. Is Cummings. Williams oh, gonna try and a shot blocked by Zach, a perimeter three rejected. Oh my, was that as bad a shot as you've ever seen taken under circumstances? Well, the Explorers running it down. 20 seconds to shoot, minute and a half left in the game. And a timeout by the Explorers, 14 seconds to shoot, minute 23 left. They're down by two. Wow. Timeout. Here's wow. a look at that. Oh, my. Not a fake, not anything. How much time was left on the clock then? Still plenty of time, I think. Oh, I think there was 15 to 20 seconds left on the clock. I'm not... That may be the all-time worst <laughs> shot selection that I have now, wait ever a minute. seen. You've been doing this for a few years. Uh, 40, Are you telling me? 40 years, and I may <laughs> never have seen anything that bad. Oh, man. And, and in fact, it was just a real slow, uh, holy. So, all right, he comes back in the huddle. You're, you're coaching him. What do you say? Don't do that again. I'd probably say a little bit more than that. <laughs> You know, they've, they've got to get to the free throw line, at least, you know, that's, and, and they had no chance there, and they had to get it up to that four-point lead, and that was just a, uh, holy cow, I'll dream about that uh -oh. one. Uh-oh. All right, tonight, the unbeaten Florida State Seminoles, we're going to turn to, to talk for, to football for a second. They take on the rambling wreck from Georgia Tech, the ACC championship. Saturday night football, number four Florida State against number 11 Georgia Tech tonight at 8 Eastern on ABC. The Temple's made 94% of their free throws here today, so much higher than their norm. But a two-point game, 14 seconds for LaSalle to get a shot off here as we come down to crunch time. Jordan Price. Steve Zach, Leon Roberts, 
And back to Price. Down to five seconds. Well, Lewis deep in the corner. And a floating shot that won't go in. Batted around. And Cummings comes up with it. So minute left. Temple with the lead and the basketball. And it's been Temple solid defense by LaSalle in the second half to get him back in only down two. Steve Zach's been a big part of that. Crashing the boards. Well, you're, you're right about what a good job he had done, but he almost ruined the whole deal with his shot attempt over there. Well, he may have shot blocked there, so he's been all over the place, Steve Zach. And uh, that's what it takes, the possession arrow Temple, the timeouts you can see. Uh, one each, and the next foul, double bonus time for LaSalle. Zach has three blocks, got 12 rebounds, hasn't scored much in this game, but he's done a lot of the little things. So you probably want to take off a few seconds here, but but keep working, keep your offense. This is where you want your offense up high, Mike, so you don't have the baseline as a six defender. Get it above the baseline so you can drive baseline and pick up the foul rather than get into trouble in a double team or something. So right now it's crucial that they stay at least eight feet above the baseline so they can use it to drive. Now do you try to run as much time off this shot clock as possible I'd, under a minute to go? I kind of want to go down to 10 I think. Let's see what they do to Cozy. Trying to beat his man off the dribble. Kicks it over to Brown and now they're down to 10. And he's backed away 30 feet from get the basket. Out of there, they're not going to get anything. Now he hangs in the air. No whistle. Loose ball. He got his own rebound. The put back. No. The tip. No. Two tips. Jerome Webb has it. And now LaSalle can tie or maybe win this thing. 23 seconds left. And a timeout. This Palestra crowd is roaring. Well, Temple had three chances there at the rim to maybe get the game winner, but yep. couldn't get it to go. Credit Josh Brown for going to get the offensive rebound, and they batted around a couple times, but they don't come up with it. Sometimes you try to uh, get a whistle there, as Josh Brown did, didn't get it. Then you're in trouble. Wright gets another rebound. He's been a terror on the boards. All right, 18.3 left. You try to win it or you try to get a two? Well, I think you just keep first guy that has an opportunity go, but just don't throw something up there. You've got plenty of time to get a good shot. You've got 18 seconds to go. You want to make sure that you, you're in a position where what happens could turn you into a free throw shooter as well. All right, Temple has the possession arrow. LaSalle has no timeouts left. There's Price, jumper, no. And Brown rebounds and he fouled. So they took the shot quickly. See, that's, to me, that's just exactly what you don't want. You've got time and you're taking a shot where you're not going to get fouled. You want to have a chance to get to the bucket, but you also want to have a chance to go to the free throw line. Uh, here it is. He didn't get his shoulders squared up and missed it. Uh, just a little bit surprised he didn't go to the basket. Now here, what, what you want here, I think, is if he makes one free throw, if Brown makes one free throw, you let them bring it down the floor, and then you foul them so they don't get a chance at a three-point shot. But he's got to make one. Uh, one and one, he's got the front end. So now it's a three-point game. He makes this shot, and it's a two-possession game with nine seconds left. But still, I would foul at midcourt somewhere so we can't get in a tie with the three. If he makes this one, it should be over with. Uh, Brown settles in. And it's good. Temple. That's two crucial free throws. 18 of 19 from the line. Lewis to the rim and reverses it. Won't go. Batted around. Temple has it and they have the game. 3.4 left. They'll go to the line with a four point lead. And John Giannini is 
He's steaming over there. That last sequence just wasn't the shot he was looking for. Had to be a drive. You know, you, you've got to you've got to set it up. If you're, whatever he said, I, I don't know. But you have got to have a drive. You've got to spread the court, drive, draw the foul, or get the shot. But but just to quickly throw one up like that just doesn't get anything done. All right, the missed free throw. Four-point game, final second. Lewis will let it go. And he hits it. I think it counts. And it ends up being a one-point game. How about that? You talked about these one-point turns here and there. Free throws and ends up being a one-point game. As Temple defeats LaSalle 58 to 57. Bob Knight, it came right down to the wire. Yeah, it was, and it was really a result. You got to give LaSalle a lot of credit because they were just getting pounded to begin with. And they reversed the game where they were right in it and had as much chance to win the game as Temple did. And it certainly didn't look like that in the first half. Well, Quentin DeCozzi had 19. The Owls win it 58-57. Once again, the final score. Temple by one over LaSalle. The streamers were flying here in the Cathedral of College Basketball. Temple wins this big five opener. Coming up next is Sports Center for Bob Knight. I'm Mike Crispino, and thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed it from the Palestra in Philadelphia, where the crowd was rocking, and the Temple Owls won it by a single digit. This is Sports Center live. Tough times for Michigan football. Not bowl eligible. Coach got fired. But at least the basketball team is ranked. Looking good here. Derek Walton Jr. Jumper blocked. Nice awareness. Drains it. Wolverines going to handle New Jersey Institute of Technology, right? Rob Akuaba backdoor. Michigan, though, still leading. Nice ball movement from the Highlanders. Howard with the lay-in. Kai Howard. More from the Wolverines. Karis LeVert drains it. Michigan back on top one, getting everything it can handle from New Jersey Institute of Technology. Step back three from DeMond Lynn. Highlanders hit 11 of 18 from downtown. Cameron Chapman misses the second free throw intentionally. And Michigan upset at home as 23-point underdogs or so. Tough times in Ann Arbor right now. Uh, we are just getting started here. Heck of a day already in college athletics. Uh, Darren Haynes alongside Doug Kazarian. Welcome into a fresh edition of Sports Center. But we also focus our attention on college football. Some of the best analysts in house here to break down who's in and who's not in college football's first playoff system. But first, we need to focus on the teams that are playing today. Yeah, that TCU Baylor debate only makes sense if both teams take care of business. Today, TCU in action right now. No Big 12 championship game, but Horn Frogs can beat up on an Iowa State team that has yet to win a conference game. Little trickery, Trevon Boykin to David Porter. Back to Boykin. Beautiful play designed by Gary Patterson. Touchdown, Horn Frogs, as you look at the trickery again. TCU 23 and 2 when ranked in the top five. That's best in FBS history. More from the Horn Frogs. Conventional touchdown. Boykin to Josh Doxson. Touchdown, TCU. And then Aaron Green up the gut for the touchdown. Iowa State trying to answer a little trickery of their own. Jarvis West, but intercepted by Ranthony Tejada. TCU gets the ball back, however, ensuing drive Boykin overthrows his target Sam E. Richardson with the interception but TCU leads 17-3 at the break it's now 24 to 3 Horn Frogs early moments of the second half maybe some style points are needed given that TCU is about a five touchdown favorite in this one now without putting the cart before the horse because Baylor still has to beat a ranked Kansas State team David Pollock weighs in on that TCU Baylor debate. 
The big debate across college football, TCU versus Baylor. Who deserves that spot in the first ever college football playoff? I think it's interesting. In the criteria the committee outlined, they said head-to-head -head matter. That was going to be something they took into account. They said conference championships mattered. So when you start looking at these teams, the Big 12, every team plays each other. They played each other. The resumes are very, very similar. Does head-to-head -head come into play? I think it should. I might agree if somebody said that I think TCU might be a better football team. But when you look at this and you say Baylor beat that team, it's hard for me to put TCU in the playoff over the Baylor Bears. It's certainly a heated debate. And actually, a fire is potentially what prevented this Baylor-TCU debate from burning even more. Back in the 1900s, both Baylor and TCU were located in Waco, Texas. Then in 1910, a TCU campus fire forced the school to move to Fort Worth. So they're now located about 100 miles apart into college football. Analyst Trevor Maddich split right down the middle. Okay. For us Bears, it comes down to three words, head to head. We beat TCU, face to face, mano a mano. We beat you. Wait a minute, hold up, Baylor. How many games in a football season? Since you Bears only have four paws, I'll help you out. There's 12. That's why they call it complete body of work, fuzzball. A hey, body of work, that's to separate teams that didn't play head to head. We have the same record in the same conference. And since frogs have tiny little brains, let oh. me remind you one more time. We beat you. Listen, man, we went to your place. 119 total points scored, and we lost by just three. The way I see it, on a neutral field, that's a wash at best. Cry a river, pond frog. Not we have cool. to go to your place next year. Are you going to spot us a field goal then? Well, no. I don't want to live in a world where your win over Minnesota trumps our win over you. <laughs> hey, Yogi, you already live in that world. We're number three. You're number six. And we have...